So hello everyone, my name is Ted Abernathy and I've been around the uh, Research Triangle region in the Raleigh area for about 30 years doing economic development. And I get to kick off this year's uh, 2022 event by talking a little bit about the demographics and the growth in the region. So we're gonna look forward into the future. And as the lead off uh, person, you're always trying to set the table a little, but as it's true in comedy clubs, uh, the bar is set kind of low. So we're just going for singles to get this started. Um, Put yourself uh, in sort of your future thinking frame of mind first. So is there anybody watching this that thinks that your company or our community uh, or you will have less disruption or less information complexity or that the pace of change is going to slow down anytime in 2022? I doubt there is. And I talk to groups and nobody does. So think about that. We're facing unprecedented disruption as we move forward, and not just from COVID-19, but from the fact that the world is changing on us. Uh, demographically, we know that in our region, there's going to be more people, but slowing growth around the country, uh, we'll talk about that. Our, our demographics are getting older. We live longer, and that's a good thing for a lot of us. Fewer children, there's more diversity. We've been talking about that for about 30 years and now it's come true and it's, uh, it's easily recognizable and that trend's not changing. Women are more educated than men. They've been, uh, been passing men in terms of college uh, going and graduation for about 30 years now and that continues. There's less people married and they marry later and have children later. Households are multi-generational. They do have children in them, but a lot more of them also have adults and grandparents in them. And we have this unevenness going on. Uh, people and places are experiencing the economy much more unevenly. So first, let's talk about you know, how income and skills work from that standpoint. So when you map the average wage and the output of individuals around the country, you can see they're very related. It's a, it's a correlation between the amount of skill a person has uh, and their average wage. So you look at GDP per capita across the bottom, and the more production someone has, the higher their wages. North Carolina is sort of in the middle of that group, but Wake County, because of the high educational attainment levels and the types of uh, businesses that we have, are way out on the right. And that's probably going to continue. And in fact, I wouldn't be surprised if it moved even further out. The other unevenness that's out there is urban rural. And we know that we've been talking about this for a long time, but the Federal Reserve in Richmond, and Sarah's going to follow me in just a couple minutes, has put out a lot of information about this. Over the last decade, in, in our district, which is District 5, uh, only the state of Virginia had rural areas grow at all. Urban areas grew everywhere. And you can see the difference there. As people get more congregated in tighter areas in, in urban America, we also know that urbanization raises productivity. And so these two trends tend to feed on each other and it's not something we expect to see change anytime soon. We've got a lot of challenges ahead. We have them ahead in our region, but all over the country. The one that everybody's talking about today is the workforce challenge. How do we find enough people with the right skills to fuel the growth that we want to have? This is getting harder and harder because the annual change in our population, the, the rate of growth, if you will, has been slowing pretty dramatically for about 30 years. And each decade, fewer and fewer people enter our labor force. Uh, 20 years ago, we added about 9 million new kids, net new kids in a decade. This last decade, we actually had fewer children than we had before. So, you know, if you have fewer children, you're going to have fewer people entering the labor force in the next few years. There's a lot of reasons today that we, we are experiencing a more acute uh, labor shortage. Uh, women mostly have been displaced at home taking care of children. Uh, child care service numbers are down about 10%, which means that uh, there's about 10% fewer slots. They've gotten more expensive. And so more women have chosen to stay home with children or are forced to. A uh, lot more people self-employed, uh, about 42 million people self-employed these days. So more people working for themselves than for an employer. We've seen a lot of early retirements. Uh, this has predominantly happened to people over the age of 55 who have just said during, uh, during COVID-19 that we're not going back to work. And then among the adults that aren't working, many have physical or mental health issues, and those have risen during the pandemic. 
The population of North Carolina over the last five years, you can see, has concentrated more. The dark green, where you can see Wake County in the middle there, are the fastest growing areas. The red area has actually lost population during the last five years, and uh, that's overall population. Uh, spreading out in our region, uh, about 10 years ago, we did a uh, the first rise and shine carry for the, or the carry chamber. And at that time, the number of houses permitted in Wake County, 63% of them were either in Raleigh or Cary. Today, that number's down to 27%. Areas like Apex and Fuquay and Wake Forest and Holly Springs have all seen rapid growth as the growth is spread out across Wake County and even further to Johnston County and Lee County and, and Harnett County. So we're going to see growth in our region continue, but it's going to spread out further and we're going to see spirals outward of the new housing. Uh, when you look at the country and we look at the working age population, those are 25 to 64 year olds, the projections for the next decade are pretty dire if you're in the Northeast or the upper Midwest. We're lucky here in North Carolina, we expect to grow here. Uh, the, because you can see it's the Western states and the Southeastern states that are growing the most. But if you're in the North, Northeast or the upper Midwest and you're trying to recruit new business or trying to retain businesses, and you know that the workforce, which is already tight, is gonna be shrinking, that puts a real disadvantage on you. In North Carolina, that same period of time, you can see the, the metro areas are where most of our uh, working age population growth is going to be. Uh, a lot of the state expects to see worker shrinkage. And so our area of the state, along with Wilmington and Charlotte and up in the mountains and a little bit uh, in our university areas of Pitt and Watauga County and up near Norfolk are the only parts of the state that are really expected to see worker growth. You know, these data analytics, I'm, I'm big on data, and those of you who have heard me before know that we, we look at it a lot. You, you are, we're all getting used to it by now. We see these best state rankings all the time. We're lucky North Carolina is one of only four states that end up in the, in the best, the top 10 of almost every ranking. It's us in Texas and Tennessee and Georgia, and those are four states that are growing pretty quickly. But you know, all these data uh, points, are they're, they're no longer about um, who do you think is the best? There are a lot of data points that are pulled together. And I, I'm, I'm a data guy, but I'm also a baseball guy. And I hate data analytics in baseball because having three infielders on the right side of the infield doesn't make any sense to me, except that the problem is it works. And so as we get tired of judging places by data, the problem is they tend to work. When you look at the best state rankings and the fastest growing states, they all end up down in this, this uh, lower left corner. So they're the ones that people know are growing and the ones that people rank the highest. We do a, a bunch of these kind of rankings for clients all over the country. We do one with over 50 factors for manufacturing. North Carolina ranks fourth in that one, and that's real strong with its business climate, number two in the, in the country. So what does that mean? Well, what happens when you map the manufacturing growth in the country is all 10 of the top states for business climate, infrastructure, and workforce end up being the states that are growing. They're the ones circled in the red. And by the way, the five lowest states up there in the right corner, they're the ones that are, whose, whose manufacturing jobs are shrinking the most. So data analytics becomes more important. The Raleigh Chamber has been working with us for quite a few years now on looking at metros. Uh, for the third or fourth year in a row in our rankings, which includes dozens and dozens of, metri of, of metrics, Raleigh finished number one. We finished number one in talent, number one in cost and business climate, and number one position for the future. This year, you know, we looked at a few very specific things, the ability to attract highly educated talent. And uh, I can't think of something that businesses wouldn't want more than that. And you can see this is the People born in a different state mapped against people who have a BA in our region only trails Washington, D.C. in that. We also this year started looking at a new index for quality of life, because while quality of life has become important, uh, this year, at our first time doing this, Raleigh finished number four in quality of life. Next year, we're going to add a, a DEI index to this also. And so we continue to try to map and figure out where we need to get better. But the good news is, we're really good already. As we think about the future, we look at the types of jobs for the future, and those are typically in advanced industries, industries that require more technology, more science, uh, higher, higher skilled labor. 
Uh, we trail about six places so far, uh, San Francisco, uh, San Francisco, Seattle, Austin, Washington, and Boston. But both Raleigh and Durham, both our metros, score among the top 10 in the country for the percentage of overall jobs that are these new position jobs. We look at tech sector jobs. North Carolina, again, positioned to grow in the next few years. Not every state is, uh, is in that top 15. You can see they're scattered around the country. Uh, Maryland up there and, uh, and uh, Washington out to the far west, but really tight numbers of uh, tech sector employment. We also look at tech occupation because every industry needs more technology workers now, not just what we think of as traditionally tech companies. Again, North Carolina ranked number 11. All of that matters because when people are considering Raleigh and Wake County and the Triangle, they start by looking at some of those state business climate rankings. So this year, for NC Tech, and we, we uh, launched a new thing called a Tech Talent Index. We're trying to figure out where, uh, which metros in America have the best ability to attract tech talent. Again, multi-factor analysis, both uh, Raleigh Carey and the Durham Chapel Hill Metro scored in the top 10. Uh, Charlotte also scored in the top 30. So our state is positioned well for the technology workers of the future. Uh, between now and 2030, we know technology is going to march on. We're going to have more augmented and virtual reality, more autonomous vehicles, AI. Uh, batteries are going to take huge leaps forward with off-the-grid energy and wearables and personal medical. I also think that we're going to look into the future and see more manufacturing opportunities as we reshore to America, more automation, which means more people to manually deal with that automation with higher skills. Uh, infrastructure and logistics have become a priority. We've all seen during the COVID uh, pandemic that we need to improve our infrastructure. Productivity is going to rise across the board, and we're going to prize those employees. Uh, expect retention strategies that you'll hear about later in this program to become one of the things that companies focus on. Uh, a lot of gig gains. People are figured out that sometimes for them working for themselves and trying to fill that need works for them. And then education and health were, were transformed during the pandemic and that transformation is going to continue. We're going to see more uh, green transformation. And we're also going to have more sorting of politics and policy. And uh, I don't think many of us enjoy some of the, the negativity around political sorting, but it is part of our future. Finally, uh, our region is going to remain one of the top regions in the country. We're going to see significant growth, up to 20,000 new people a year in, uh, in Wake County, and we're going to remain one of the top locations uh, in the country. So as we set the stage for looking at uh, 2022, we know most of the news this year is good, but we also know that uh, things are being disrupted every day, and we have to be vigilant about that and keep our eye on everything to make sure we're positioned for the future. Again, great pleasure to be with you today. Uh, I hope you'll enjoy uh, all the other speakers. I know I'm going to sit back and, and try to find a few nuggets in there that are going to help my company for the next year. Thank you very much.